today we're going to be talking about repentance. Um, do you guys remember anything about repentance from the last lessons that we have talked? Like, what do you know about repentance? Um, isn't it like asking for forgiveness? Yeah, uh -huh, that's part of it. Yeah, that's all I remember from it, too. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so repentance has a very deep meaning uh, to us. Um, in the Bible Dictionary, um, repentance is defined uh, very, very frankly, and it sort of explains what we need to do in order to repent. So if you could read uh, the highlighted part right there for us. Okay. Um, the Greek word of which this is the translation denotes a change of mind, a fresh view about God, about oneself, and about the world. Since we are born into conditions of mortality, repentance comes to comes to mean a turning of the heart and will to God and a renunciation of sin to which we are naturally inclined. So after reading that, what do you have to do in order to repent? Um, that says it's a renunciation of sin and then like a turning of the heart and will to God. It also says like a change of mind and a fresh view about. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, sorry, uh, a fresh view about God and about oneself. Mm -hmm. So how do you think you can do that? Um, I guess not only like asking for forgiveness, but like also like committing to not make the same mistake again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try and not do it or get rid of the things that lead me to do it, you know? Yeah. So I notice some triggers sometimes. Yeah, so everyone makes set, makes mistakes, makes sins. Uh, how do you guys know that what you're doing is wrong and that you need to repent? I feel guilty. I don't know, mm -hmm. but whenever I do something that I feel like I shouldn't do, I know after that I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And so then when you, when you feel that guilt, and how do you feel? Like when you've done something you know was wrong, is that usually just guilt? Yeah, kind of? guilt, like dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and sorry. No. And do you ever good. like? Do you usually just kind of like? Do you do anything about it, or do you just kind of live with it and hope it goes away? Or does that make sense? What I'm asking. Yeah. So I I've never like repented, but I just okay. kind of try to stay away from the thing that made me feel gross. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. sense. So that's kind of one thing, right? We when we when we sin, we feel guilt. Right? But we also can feel godly sorrow. And godly sorrow might be inspired by guilt, right? Like we feel bad for having done what we do, but then it inspires us to change and to become better. And so that's a big part of repentance, right? Like you obviously, um, when you sin, you feel bad about what you've done. But then when we repent, we're able to, and we feel godly sorrow, right? Then we're able to turn away from that thing, right? Like you said, like you try not to do it again. And if you turn away completely from that, and if you're praying for repentance and for God's forgiveness, then you will be able to feel peace instead of guilt, right? Instead of just kind of pushing it away. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to read this scripture in Doctrine and Covenants, verse, or section 58. And while, you, um, while you're reading, it's going to be verse 42 and 43. I want you to pay attention to how you can know if somebody has repented of their sins, okay? So, um, does one of you want to read 42 and the other read 43? Yeah, I'll read 42. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. By this you may know if a man repenteth of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. So, what do you think confess them and forsake them means? Um, well, I know that confess means to, like, to admit to doing something. I'm not really sure what forsake means. I know. And then, like, to leave. To, like, stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, similar to what she was saying before, um, it's to uh, confess, make sure that you have uh, gotten everything out of the way. You have um, admitted to everything you have done wrong. And then by knowing what you have done wrong, totally changing and never going back to it. So just as the Bible dictionary definition says, it's a change of heart and a change of mind, a fresh view of, of, of God. So how do you think um, you can forsake some sins? 
Something to get out of the, or get away from the thing that causes you to commit that thing or to do that thing that makes you feel bad. Or yeah. like try and get away from it. Change your environment if you feel like it's making you do something you don't want. Yeah. And that's part of why the church is here. The church is here to create a good environment so you can be around uh, people who uh, want to do good. And uh, one of the themes when you're a member of the church is you get to go to the bishop and he is one of the people who can uh, help you work through some sins and you can confess, confess your sins to um, him because he, is, uh, he has authority over you and he can help you with that process. Do you have any questions? Um, what does repentance look like normally? Is it just praying in front of the phone? So repentance is really based on the individual. Um, many people do pray and ask Heavenly Father for forgiveness, um, but it's also important to make reparations. So if you have sinned and done something that has also hurt another person, it is important to make reparations to them as well as to yourself. Um, and learning to forgive um, yourself and uh, what happened and then forsake them. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, right? So just um, making right what you've done wrong and praying for forgiveness, learning to forgive yourself. And I think you'll know, you'll know when you've repented. Does that make sense? Like when you finish the process of repentance, you'll feel it in your heart. You'll feel that peace and you'll feel the love of the Savior. So one example of somebody who went through that process of repentance is Alma the Younger. And we've talked about him a little bit in our other lessons. Um, when he was a young man, he made some really bad decisions. He was trying to lead the people of the church away, and um, he did. He was very successful in his efforts. And one day as he was with some friends, they were walking, and an angel appeared to them and told them that what they were doing was wrong. And he then after you know this experience he fell to the ground and he didn't speak or move or open his eyes for three days and during those three days he was having a vision right of the lord and he talks about his experience and the pain and joy that he felt um let's see if you could read verse 17 and 18 and then verse 19 20 and 21 so read 17 18 and then And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am I in the gall of, who, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And then while you read this next part, look for look for the difference between how he felt before he repented, right? So just what you were reading, and then after when he was repentant. Okay. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Okay, so what stood out to you about those verses? Um, well, before he was, he had repented, um, he described his pain as like wrapped with torment, mm -hmm. and then afterwards he said, what did he say exactly? Filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. And so, like, torment is like, yeah. like excruciating, you know? You like, think about it and you're like, something you never want to go through. Mm -hmm. But then to know that your joy can be exceeding that, um, just by, by repenting, like giving up your things to the Lord, it's like so sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. Um, I liked how it said that he could remember his pains no more. And then um, that was just kind of a cool thought that he didn't even think about all the pain that he just went through, even though he went into pretty good detail about how he felt before. Mm -hmm. And I know I've definitely seen that in my own life, right? When I repented 
um, that I can feel that peace and joy that Alma talks about. And so we would like to invite you, if you're willing tonight, to pray and seek for repentance for um, your sins. And then if you um, feel that that is right, would you be willing to be baptized next month? Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.